this time on the Chinese lathe improvements, I'll be working out a quick fix for the broken motor mount. Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. The first major problem I spotted with my Chinese mini lathe was that the motor made a horrible noise. There was a lot of rattling from under the gear train cover and a louder grinding sound whenever it was run with the slightest load. To find out why, I first had to remove the gear train cover at the back, then disassemble and remove the various layers of the gear train and finally the cover to expose the drive belt. It's pretty clear that the belt is slipping over the tooth pulley that drives it, but I needed to disassemble further to find out why. The motor is accessed by removing this cover at the back, held in place by three screws. With the motor exposed, I could see that it's barely being held in place at all, but from this side I can't see why. The motor is probably supposed to be attached to the bed casting on the far side. Everything on the other side of the lathe is under this electrical control box, so that has to come off. The top screws are the most obvious, but it's easier to disassemble starting with the less obvious screws at the bottom first. The cover lifts clear without needing to disconnect most of the wires and I tilted the bed onto its side to get a better view. It's immediately clear what the problem is. The motor is held by two studs which are much too narrow for the two slots in the bed casting. The gap has been bridged with a short stack of thin steel washers, but the washers and studs are soft and have bent during transit, leaving the motor flapping around. The studs are too badly bent to reuse and I need something much stiffer than the washers to get a secure mount. There are a lot of ways to massively improve how this motor is held, but for now I just need a quick solution to the problem so I can properly test it out after reassembly. The quickest way to double check the thread of the mounting holes is with a stock screw and this confirms their M6. There's about 6mm of clearance depth. The slots in the casting are just about 9.5mm wide and 7mm deep, so a fitting that will sit firmly will need to be close to that size. The quick easy fix is to make custom studs which are M6 threaded on one end, 9.5mm diameter to sit snugly in the slots, and then a suitable thread on the other end to tighten against the outside of the casting. I decided to try making some out of M10 threaded rod, as that cuts down the amount of threading I need to do. I'm not certain what grade of stainless this is, but it really makes the bandsaw blade squeal. This may mean I'll have difficulty cutting the M6 thread later, as it doesn't sound like it cuts easily. As usual, I clean up and face the end with a general purpose turning tool before working on the diameter. The first step is to rough out the length required to go through the slots in the casting and also fit firmly into the mounting holes on the motor. Based on the measurements I took earlier, this is about 13mm. I need to take down the diameter of this section to a little under 9.5mm so it will fit through the slots. The 
The length that will screw into the motor needs to be 6mm deep, and this needs to be fairly exact. Too long and it penetrates too deep into the motor housing and interferes with the motor. Too shallow and the threads will be overstressed and could easily wear out or strip due to vibration. I measured this length using the scale on the feed dial, which should be easily accurate enough. With the benefit of hindsight, it would have been a really good idea to chamfer the thread start before I tried using the die. I'm using a split M6 die, so to make things easier, I'll open up the die for the first pass, so it doesn't have to cut as deeply into the material on that first pass. This tailstock die holder helps keep the die really straight and make sure the thread isn't cut crooked. The die starts to cut, but after less than a turn, it starts to get difficult. The lathe tool post is in the way, so the carriage needs to be moved out of the way first. The feel of the die is strange as it turns, and before long I work out that the stud is just slipping in the chuck. I tried adding cutting oil, which I should have done to start with, though that probably won't fix it alone. Tightening up the chuck as much as it felt safe seemed to increase the grip enough to start making progress again. Gripping the thread directly in the three jaw wasn't the best idea. It doesn't hold well because there's very little contact area, and now I have to tighten it, the thread crests are getting damaged by the jaws. This is a very short thread, so chip buildup isn't a big problem. For long threads, it's very important to clear chips when threading stainless. The chips will be work hardened and can be sharp enough to dig into the part if they get impacted and ruin the thread. The thread is okay, but hasn't been cut right up to the shoulder. By flipping the die around, I can chase the thread with the opposite face, which doesn't have as much of a leading angle and should cut closer to the face. Finally, I loosen the screw that was opening the die up so that it returns to its normal shape and tighten the other two retaining screws to hold it there. I can now retace the thread to bring it to the full thread depth. With that thread finished, the studs are ready to be installed. The wide ends of the studs can't fit through the holes, so the motor needs to be held roughly in the place and the studs screwed in from the far side. The studs aren't quite parallel, which looks like an issue with the straightness of the holes in the motor, but doesn't seem to matter too much. The slight damage to the threads makes it a bit difficult to get the nuts to start correctly. The damage isn't bad enough to affect the strength of the thread, but at this point it's an annoyance. At this point the nuts need to be loose enough to allow the motor to slide freely so I can adjust its position until the belt tension is correct. These two screws between the underside of the bed casting and the motor have attracted quite a lot of discussion in the comments. A few people have suggested they're used to adjust the alignment of the headstock, but this theory doesn't turn out to be possible. The holes they fit into are aligned with voids in the headstock casting, so they don't make any contact with the headstock no matter how far they're screwed in. I'm convinced the screws are there to keep the motor correctly positioned, and without them there's no way for the motor to, to keep proper belt tension. The main mounting studs aren't positioned well to withstand that tension, and the varying force would inevitably cause them to strip the threads in the motor housing and pull free.
One of the most important thing about mounting the motor is getting the belt tension correct. Too loose and it will slip, as we've seen. Too tight and it will stress the motor bearings and wear out the belt too quickly. I can't quite slip the belt onto the spindle pulley with the two screws in place, so the rear screw has to be screwed all the way in to make enough wiggle room. I shifted the motor to get the right belt tension and adjusted the screws until they're the right length to hold it there. It's difficult to tell when the motor is at the right height and correctly rotated so the studs are perpendicular, but I got there with some guesswork. I then tighten up the stud nuts to fix the motor at this height. Finally I lock the screws in place with their locking nuts. This fixed the issue with the belt jumping, but the lathe was still a long way from being ready to use. The next video in this series will be about fixing the issues with the very bad fit everything has with the top of the lathe bed. I measured these problems in an earlier video, and I've done a lot of work to fix it since. Thanks for watching, take care, I love you all.